part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. I'm blessed because of Jesus. And as long as Jesus is blessed, I'm blessed. As long as Jesus is righteous, I'm righteous. As long as Jesus is all the things he is, I am. If, if, Jesus, if, it's, if, if Jesus is still the all right accepted sacrifice, if the sacrifice good, I'm good. Have you accepted your invitation to Grace Life Homecoming? Meet Creflo and Taffy Dollar at the World Dome, July 13th through 15th in College Park, Georgia. You know the lineup. Clarence McClendon, Gregory Dickow, Michael Smith, Mimi Haddad, and special musical guests Ty Tribbett, William Murphy, and just added to the lineup is J.J. Hairston. There's something for everyone. You don't want to miss this in-person only celebration. Register for free now, now, now. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, your love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Ooh, let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. Romans chapter 6 and verse 14, and uh, <clears throat> it's important to understand that grace teaches us, not them, but it teaches us, us who have entered into a place of believing, okay? But there are some things that we have to understand in order to see properly. You know, some people have sight and others have vision. And we need to be able to, to, to understand what's going on here. So verse 14, Romans 6, 14, read it out loud together with me, ready to read. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but you're under grace. So sin will not have dominion over you because you're under grace, but it will have dominion under you, over you, if you are operating by the Mosaic law. Now, people cringe when they hear about operating by the law, because there's still a lot of Christians who believe that there's nothing wrong with operating by the law. The problem with operating by the Mosaic law is that you are operating, the Mosaic law is not just, uh, you know, moral law, ceremonial law, uh, the law is dealing with doing sacrifices, civil law. Uh, all three of those make up the, the Mosaic law. But the Ten Commandments, which is the moral law of God, it's, it's eternal. It's, it's, it's who God is. It's His character. And you will, hear, you will hear it repeated by Paul in the New Testament, uh, except the one about the Sabbath, because Jesus is our Sabbath. Paul said, it's still good for you to honor your mother and father. So well, what's the difference here? The Mosaic law is uh, something that is being administered by rule keeping. So you got, you, got, you got 10 commandments, which represents the moral law of God, but it's like, okay, you know, thou shalt not commit adultery. Now do these 20 things to see if you can make that come to pass. <laughs> and so the rules Rule-keeping was the administrator trying to accomplish morality in your life, and it failed miserably. So Paul begins to repeat the moral law of God, but now it is going to be administered by the Holy Spirit. Now, why am I bringing this up? Things changed. Things changed from before Jesus died on the cross and after he died on the cross. Things changed. And we, we don't do our lives justice if you just keep reading the Bible like it's, it's like um, one, uh, one dispensation. The, it's, it's, it's many dispensations that, that's there. There was the dispensation, you know, a, a specific time 
uh, and a season for a specific revelation and, and an action. And, and what, we, what, what you do is you read the Bible from Genesis and you think it's just all one dispensation, and it's not. And to fail to understand that, uh, you could actually say something that's true in one dispensation that is no longer true in the other dispensation. We are no longer under the dispensation of the law. We are under grace, and what does that do? Now we can get born again. Nobody was born again. Please see this. Nobody was born again before Jesus did his thing. So everybody you read about, including Abraham, one of the things about Abram was God sent Melchizedek as a priest because there needed to be somebody to stand between Abram and him. <laughs> he, he, he believed God. There was something interesting that he believed God, so he represent what can happen when you believe God. And he's pointing towards what would happen in that upcoming dispensation. But you've got to start understanding that if you don't rightly divide the Word, you could be preaching a truth in one dispensation, which may be not the truth where we are today. Does that make sense? Now, go with me to um, 2 um, Timothy chapter 2, 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and, and verse 15. I'm always concerned about uh, us doing a better job uh, with understanding the Bible. We, uh, we, we got to do a better job. 2 Timothy chapter 2, 15, uh, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, how many of you know if you can rightly divide the word, you can wrongly divide it, right? If you can rightly divide it, there is a potential that you can wrongly divide it. Now, look at this in the uh, Amplified Bible, the same verse of Scripture in the Amplified Bible. Um, study to be eager and to do your utmost to present yourself to God, approved, tested by trial, a workman who has no cause to be ashamed, correctly analyzing. How many of you know if you can correctly analyze it, there is a potential you can incorrectly analyze it. Correctly analyzing, accurately, accurately dividing, rightly handling, and skillfully teaching the word of truth. Wow, that's, that's an awesome responsibility on a dude or dudesses in, in the pulpit. <laughs> it's huge responsibility in the pulpit, and, and, and I think it's been taken lightly. Any old dude that has a little charisma gets up not prepared, has not understood the homiletics that's necessary to, 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 to rightly put principles where they need to be and, and dispensations where they need to be, and you just get up there hollering the Scripture. So what we do is we take, <clears throat> we take the text out of the context and we give the people the con. I know people who take the text out of a context, and they're not concerned about whether it's true or not. They're only concerned about if it fits their fancy title. And that's not good. Because it sounds good, and it gets people to rocking and rolling, and they holler and they scream, but it's just not rightly dividing and skillfully handling the word of truth. When I see the word of truth, my, in my mind, I'm thinking, which word of truth? Are you talking about a word of truth that was true under the dispensation of the law, or are you talking about the word of truth that is truth as a result of Jesus being raised from the dead? Which one? And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You got to rightly discern that. What is he talking? What truth makes you free? Certainly not the truth of the law, because he tells us you're not free under the law. So it has to be the truth of this gospel of grace that makes you free, and, and you got to be free from something. What is it you're being free from? You're free, being free from the, the bondage that came by doing the law. What's truth? Accurately dividing, rightly and skillfully teaching the word of truth. So one of the biggest problems we have right now is Christian people haven't been trained to read the Bible correctly. And so you just listen to what everybody says. 
And, and listen, I was, I'm, as a former therapist and a student of psychology, you can, you can say something and then go tell a person, there's what the Scripture says, and I'm looking at the Scripture in light of what you just told me. With no context. You don't define a Scripture by going to the dictionary. Context defines the Scripture. What does that mean in context? And so, I want to do a before the cross, after the cross marathon this morning. <laughs> and, 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 and let me say to you, anybody you're talking to, you, 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 might, you might just be quiet and have this in mind. If they don't understand what happened, the truth that was before the cross versus the truth after the cross, they won't have on grace lens, so most likely they're not going to see nothing you got to say because of the perspective that they've been viewing it from. You ready? Let's deal with the, uh, the, the big ones first, the, the big six first, and then I'll, I'll deal with several more. Uh, before the cross, we were blessed because of um, we were, we were blessed because of perfect obedience. In other words, you had to perfectly obey in order to be blessed. Deuteronomy 28 and 2. I'll try to give you scriptures with each one of them. There are more, but the, I just selected one or two so you can just look at it. But in um, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and 2, he says, And all these blessings shall come on thee, thee, and all these blessings shall overtake thee. Wait a minute. If thou. So he says there's a condition that's got to be met. The, the Mosaic Covenant is basically a, a, a performance-based covenant. It is a covenant based in self-righteousness and self-performance. Everything about the Old Covenant is based in self-righteousness and self-performance. Religion and self-righteousness are exactly the same. It's man striving to be right with God on his own. That's what religion is all about. When you find bad religion, you're going to find self-righteousness. It's performance-based. It's you doing it without Christ. He says, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. Here's the condition. If thou hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, if you do this, then that will happen. Now, you have to trace that, those two words throughout the Bible. If thou is language of the Old Covenant. If thou is language of performance base. If thou is language of religion. If thou. And religious, religion teaches congregation, you got to do this in order to be blessed. And if you don't do this, you're not going to be blessed. They don't say curse, but it's the same thing. If thou, if thou, which is an indication you're operating under the truths of the Mosaic Covenant, which is not the better covenant. Right. Now, that was before the cross. So what is it after the cross? Well, Galatians 3, 13, and 14. So now you have church people who are working hard to keep the commandments and the Mosaic law to get blessed. They're depending on their performance to get blessed. That's what, that's what they were doing. And they're still doing it today. You have to perform to get blessed. Oh, see, the reason why you haven't been blessed is because you missed the grace conference. That's, it, that's what it is. And, and it's, it's always something why you didn't get something or even something why you got something. Because under the covenant of grace, there is no boasting. And if you boast, you're most likely operating under the truths of the Mosaic law. Now, watch this. So what changed then after Jesus, after the cross? Now you're blessed because of Jesus' perfect obedience. Under, after Jesus, after the cross, Jesus gave us a gift of perfect obedience. We get in on stuff we didn't even qualify for. You, have, you can't be perfectly obedient, and nobody in here is perfectly obedient. If he didn't give us the gift of perfect obedience, we, we, we would be up a creek somewhere because there were certain things would not come on us because I am not perfectly obedient, but he is. So by faith, I receive his perfect obedience, and in his perfect obedience, 
Well, and in the New Testament, you know, I, I, I didn't have time. I may, I may add it the, the day while I'm going on. But obedience on the New Covenant, obedience under the New Covenant is not based on your actions first. It's based on your believing first. Yeah, but see, you, you see the problem? If you go to try to operate in obedience in the New Covenant like you did in the Old Covenant, or if you're operating in obedience after the cross like you did before the cross, you're going to be trying to do something, and that's not even what obedience is defined as in the New Covenant. In the New Covenant, it's defined as believing. Right. In the Old Covenant, it's, fine, it, it's defined as your actions towards something. Well, your actions have already been proven by the Mosaic law to be a horrible failure. So Jesus said, here I am, take my perfect obedience, believe and rest. That's what happened after the cross. Before the cross, you had to be perfectly obedient and perform that way. After the cross, after the cross, he gave us his perfect obedience. Look what he says, Christ hath past tense, already redeemed us from the what? Curse of the law. Question, do you believe that Christ hath already redeemed you from the curse of the law? Yes. Well, how are you going to tell somebody you're cursed if you don't do this or you're cursed if you do that? That's contradicting what Christ said. You're not dumb, I would look, if I sit up there and tell you, you know, if you don't tithe, you, you, you're cursed. Well, I, he just said he redeemed me from the curse of the law. Either he did it or he didn't. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, curses everyone that hangs on the tree, verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. How does the blessing come on you? Because you operate in perfect obedience? No. The blessing comes on you through Jesus Christ. I am blessed because of Jesus. I'm not blessed because of my perfect obedience. I don't have no perfect obedience. I, there's somebody said to me, well, the Holy Ghost only inhabits perfect, uh, or uh, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost uh, will not inhabit imperfect vessels. Ain't no other kind. <laughs> there, there's no other kind. If you could be, listen, if you could be perfect without him, he wasted his blood. Right. His death was a waste of time. Yes. So now, and here's what I get. Today, I stand blessed because of Jesus. Yeah. Isn't that simple? Yeah. No sweat at all. I'm blessed because of Jesus. Right. And as long as Jesus is blessed, I'm blessed. As long as Jesus is righteous, I'm righteous. As long as Jesus is all the things he is, I am. If, if, Jesus, if, it's, if, if Jesus is still the all right accepted sacrifice, if the sacrifice good, I'm good. But you still have people in church who say, no, I am going to work really, really hard and sweat to try to earn and deserve the right to be blessed. And then we think we got something going on and we write books about do these five things and you'll be blessed. That is law-based. Right. You reject Jesus for law-based protocols. And I don't know when you're going to wake up and you weren't blessed from doing it. You did a lot of sweating. If anything happened near a blessing, it was the mercy of God. Yeah. God would just say, look at poor little dumb thing, ain't listening in church. Let me go on and bless him. <laughs> and and I, fi I figured this out about the body of Christ, too. My mother-in-law said this before she went home to the Lord. She said, Taffy, Craft, y'all listen to me. She said, baby, you know, y'all, y'all, I know I understand y'all talking about, you know, people need wisdom. She said, but some of them people need an education. They can't read. <laughs> and it has turned out to be true. Some people just don't get it. The, the, there's a demon of religion that comes over people and it clouds their thinking and they can, what I'm showing to you and hopefully you're getting it, there's some people who sit on this and say, mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. My Bible tells me I, I, I need to be obedient in order for me to be blessed. Mm-mm, I don't receive that. Ooh, get behind me, Satan. I'm like, I'm not, I don't, I'm not talking to you anymore. Go away. Get away from me. Before the cross, there was one thing, but after the cross, there's another one. All right, ready? Let's go to the second one. What about being saved? What was the requirements for eternal life or salvation before the cross? 
Now I'm going to show you something that's going to be very interesting because the answer is found in Matthew. Matthew, in the lives of most people, is the beginning of the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that is not a part of the New Testament. It should have been on the other side of the New Testament title because Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was an illustration of Jesus operating in two ministries, twofold ministry of Jesus. Number one, to fulfill, Matthew 5, 17, he came to not to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. So you see Jesus operating as a prophet under the law. Galatians 4, 4 says he was born under the law to deliver us who were under the law. So the whole intention was to do that. And so he's born under the law. He's operating under the law. He is speaking to people under the law. He's giving advice under the law. He's doing the law where fasting was concerned, where everything was concerned. He was doing it. He had to. So how you know he did that? Because he perfectly, perfectly kept all the law, and he said it like this, every jot and tittle will be fulfilled. And as long as he was alive, the law of Moses was still in force. But when he died, the death of a testator now allows you to, to, to walk in this new and living way. The New Testament didn't start until he died. Now, why do I mention that? Because people think they're in New Testament when they say, well, it's in the red. If your hands have offended you, cut it off, it's in the red too. You got to be careful how you look at what's in the red because you could be looking at the truth of Jesus fulfilling the law as an Old Testament prophet and not Jesus who is also making a way for the grace of God to come. Be, you, that's not. It's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it, it, it's almost like a, it's almost like a purgatory five books. Like, here's what's happening right here. Hold on, see what's going on. Check him out. Jesus is going to tell you some stuff about the law you're going to understand better, but he's going to also tell you, he'll say stuff like, you know, right now you do this. He says, but there's coming a time where this is going to happen. So he does, he does those two ministries right there. And it's like you got to understand Jesus. But to say that to some people, that no, 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 my Bible tells me, you don't even know how to read it. Right. It's like the guy that just got saved like, like uh, this morning, and we just baptized him 15 minutes ago, and he is still dripping water, trying to tell you what the Lord told him. Sit yourself down and draw. <laughs> and, and I got this yesterday. I just can't forget this, but we've got to be careful not to, cre not to create a religion that wears fig leaves. Fig leaves represent self-righteousness and your own performance. But when God dresses you, you don't have to have nothing on physical, and your nakedness will still be hidden. You hear me? All right, so what was the requirement for salvation? Matthew 19, 16 and 17. Before the cross, it was this. And so Jesus is talking. He says, and behold, one, one came to him and they said unto him, good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, why did you call thou me good? Watch this. Here is the key for him, and he missed it. There is none good but one that is God. It's God. It's God. It's God. That's what you need. It's God. It's God. He kept persisting. He says, but if thou, you automatically know it's going to be some performance-based self-righteous thing. If thou will enter into life, keep the commandments. Now, the problem with that is, is you have that because it's in Matthew and that because Jesus is talking, and then a preacher gets up and say, all right, now, in order for you to really be saved, you got to keep the commandments. You, what you talking about? Are you, are we free from the commandments? No, you got, the Bible says you got to keep the commandments. You, you see, the context is king here. Take the text out of the context, it's just a con. That's what it was before, B before. That was the requirement. It was a requirement that God knew that no man could keep. He's trying to bring you to the end of yourself. We hope your life has been enriched by today's message. The entire message series can be purchased at Creflo Dollar Ministries eStore. Visit us at store.cdmcanada.ca. 
Call us toll free at 1 877 556 0668, or if it's more convenient, email us info at cdmcanada.ca.